Greetings, everyone. My name is Maxine Buckles, and I am Port Houston's Chief Business Equity Officer. Houston is one of the most diverse cities in the nation, with an Hispanic Latinx population of approximately 40%. It's important for us to embrace our diversity and celebrate the rich cultures of our city and nation. Stay tuned, some of our Port Houston teammates will share their thoughts on this month-long celebration. I think for me, Hispanic Heritage Month is a time for other people to learn about the diversity, the complexity, and the history of this very large, non-monolithic group of people that we refer to as Hispanic or Latino. Um, those terms actually mean different things. A person can be Hispanic and not Latino, as in a Span Spanish person, or they could be Latino and not Hispanic, like a Brazilian person. I am proud to say I'm both Hispanic and Latina. My family is from Mexico, um, and like 80% of the population of Mexico, I am a mestizo, which means I am half, in my case, I'm half Amerindian, and the other half of my ancestors are a mixture of Spanish, Middle Eastern, and North African. Um, and I think that's the case with a lot of Latin American people, is that they're mixed to varying degrees. And in my opinion, that creates people that can navigate different worlds all at once, because they themselves are a mixture of a lot of different things um, and ideas. Um, I think of it like, I'm kind of a foodie, so I think of it like tacos al pastor. So tacos al pastor are made with corn tortillas, which is a staple Mesoamerican food, and they have pork, and pork was brought over, over to the New World from Europe, and it's cooked in this Lebanese shawarma style technique. Um, so that to me is emblematic of Latinos in general. We are a mixture of materials and ideas from different parts of the world into something new. Uh, and sometimes delicious. <laughs> so I think it's a good, a good place to come from in the world today that there's so much diversity and we're at the same time interconnected thanks to the internet. We can be having a uh, meeting with somebody across the world who may have a very different worldview. And for me, Latinos and Hispanic people, we have these skills already set from childhood to navigate different worlds because we have a, a diversified cultural background and sometimes linguistic background. As a native Texan, there are many Hispanic influences that we celebrate, such as Cinco de Mayo and Dia de los Muertos. Although these observances originated in Mexico, the celebration in Texas are more of a statement of cultural roots rather than any political or patriotic statement. If there is a common thread, it is a proud acknowledgement of la raza. Being Hispanic is very important to me. I feel like I came from a really good place uh, in family. It taught me a lot of morals and traditions. Uh, one of the biggest things that I wanted to share with you guys is family. Uh, we do put our family first, and it's something that taught me a lot, and it's got me where I am now. So uh, I'd like to share that with the port and friends and family and make sure that you guys understand how important that is to us. Hispanic Heritage Month is a great way to celebrate the Hispanic and Latinx communities. Many of the cultures and beliefs are interwoven in the communities today. I personally believe that this is a great month to learn and educate yourself more about the Hispanic culture and its impact on America. Hispanic is used to describe the ethnicity of someone from a Spanish-speaking country. Latino can be used to describe either the ethnicity or culture of someone from a Spanish-speaking country, and the only time you should use the term Mexican is when you are describing the nationality of someone from Mexico or describing something that originates from Mexico. You should never use the term Mexican as a general term referring to everyone that speaks Spanish. When I think about how Hispanic culture has influenced me personally, I think about being a child in elementary school and learning the song La Bamba. Now it's a popular song and I believe it's about a love letter, but the whole goal of it was to bring us together and to celebrate traditions that may not be personal to us because I'm not of Hispanic origin, but it was really all about bringing us together and celebrating and loving on one another. So I think about how that influences me daily and that's one of the favorite parts that I have and takeaways of the Hispanic culture on my everyday influence. Although I am not of the Hispanic origin, I am still lucky enough to be called Tia. 
My best friend two sons have claimed me as their own. And I think that the departed of the Hispanic tradition I love the most, the closeness, the ability for friends to turn to family, and aunts to Tia. Every year from September 15th to October 15th, Americans celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month by appreciating the community's history, heritage, and culture. Hispanic Americans have been integral to the prosperity of the U.S. Their contributions to the nations are immeasurable and they embody the best of the American values. The Hispanic American community has left an indelible mark on the U.S. culture and economy. Hispanic Heritage Month allows us to celebrate our cultura, our culture, um, celebrate things of the people that have made an impact in our community and all over the world. Um, for our family and specifically, we love celebrating El Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead, which is at honoring the people that have passed on to the other side. Uh, we do big things like set up altars where we um, leave their favorite snacks, drinks, and stuff like that that they, that they used to like, put pictures of them, put flowers. Um, that is one big thing that we are trying to keep alive because being first generation Mexican American, in the United States, you do kind of lose a little bit of what they celebrate in Mexico. So keeping that tra that tradition alive is very important. Celebrating, which is coming up, La Independencia de Mexico, um, on September 16th, is also honoring the country that my parents were born in. Um, also celebrating things, I'm a Catholic, so uh, celebrating things like el, um, Las Mañanitas de la Virgen, which is the um, Virgin Mary, they do, um, they do her uh, birth, kind of like they sing to her for her birthday, which is the first sighting of La Virgen de Guadalupe. As a first generation Mexican immigrant, Hispanic Heritage Month means celebrating our culture, where we came from, and also celebrating all of our accomplishments. Good morning, my name is Diana Montemayor. I am a part of the police department at the Port of Houston and celebrating what our Hispanic heritage is about um, me and myself, uh, I think that being a Hispanic or a Mexicana, as one will call it, I'm very proud of my roots and where I come from. I come from a very strict Hispanic home. Um, I'm four out of nine. My parents have been married for 66 years, and I'm blessed to still have them alive and still be learning from them. No matter how old I might be, because I'm not as uh, young as I might appear, um, their support and their guidance has always been important. I think one makes a mistake um, by thinking that because one speaks Spanish, everybody's from Mexico, and that's not true. Uh, it's Latin America that we have to think because uh, the language of um, Spanish comes from very different parts. Uh, we're speaking of Honduras, we're speaking of El Salvador, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and so forth and so on. So I think we need to make sure that we don't label people as being Mexicans because that's not true. Uh, Mexicans have um, a very strict um, guidelines as far as living because they're old. You don't see that anymore uh, because unfortunately our ancestors have been perishing one at a time. Um, but the learning that you receive from all of them, it's, um, it's a lifetime of, um, of treasure, if I can say that. Um, I am very proud of who I am. I am very proud to represent um, part of the Hispanic community and be a part of the Port of Houston. And as an everyday, um, it's different in my job, but I do do a lot of translating and with, um, with proud, with proudness, I do that. Um, unfortunately, not everybody knows the, the language and it's very difficult when you don't know the language and there's nobody to help you. So I embrace anybody who is, um, who's able to speak both languages. Um, it is a plus rather than a minus. And I think um, uh, we should continue to encourage our, our young generation especially if they're uh, from the Hispanic or Latino community, to speak both languages. Never be embarrassed of speaking 
uh, the language nor be embarrassed of where you come from. I am very proud of who I am and will continue to embrace and um, participate in anything that would highlight who we are. Buenas tardes. Aquí estamos uh, haciendo un pequeño video para lo que es la tradición mexicana, las celebridades, las fiestas patrias que celebramos en todas partes de los Estados Unidos. Siempre nosotros los hispanos celebramos la comida, lo que es la tradicional comida, las carreras de caballos, las peleas de gallos y, y la fabulosa comida que es los nopalitos, las tortillas de maíz, los frijolitos, las tunas y, y todo lo tradicional como las mujeres se visten de adelitas, los hombres se visten de charros y estamos siempre celebrando todos juntos. Hispanic culture is not only an everyday part of my life, but being a Texas native is something that is around us all daily. One of my favorite things to do with my family is to honor my mom's legacy with some of her favorite dishes, such as enchiladas, chiles rellenos, tacos, while we listen to Tejano music. National Hispanic Heritage Month, 30 days. 30 days to celebrate the history, the contributions, and the culture of Americans whose ancestors have derived from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, North America, and Central America. You know, this brings me back to a very fond memory I had when I was young. I was about 12 years old. I went to visit my aunt. When I visited her, I got lost. I got lost and I ended up knocking on a door that wasn't her. The door opened and someone smiled and said, hola, and I looked back and I just smiled back. But they saw something. They saw a frightened kid, they saw a hungry kid, and they saw a kid that needed help. And so even though very little English was spoken, they were able to connect with me. I was able to connect with them. I was able to enjoy the food that they provided. I was able to enjoy the friendship and playfulness uh, with their children, and they were helping me to guide me to my aunt. Wow, just amazing. So as we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, what are you doing to celebrate? What are you doing? Are you partaking? and some of the foods that I just mentioned from the different cultures, from the different countries? Or are you learning a little bit more about their culture? How awesome is that? Because, for instance, if you know about Christopher Columbus, then certainly you know about Juan Ponce de Leon. I'm sure you do. And also, maybe you don't have time to do any of those things, but have you thought about contributing to a charity that focuses on uh, Hispanics? Have you thought about that? That would be fantastic to do. And lastly, in a huge diverse city that we are currently living in right now, this is a wonderful opportunity to also celebrate and know more about influential Hispanics that are really contributing to our society. This is just such a great time and a great opportunity. And as we all know, that once you learn from another culture, you're also learning a bit more about yourself. Be encouraged, and again, happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month is a time to celebrate the many contributions of Latinas and Latinos to our country, our local community, and to wider American culture. American Hispanic Latino history is rich, diverse, and long, with immigrants, refugees, and Spanish-speaking or indigenous people living in the United States since long before the nation was established. 